Before Quake was released in 1996, the entire first-person shooter genre, started with Wolfenstein 3D, was almost all rendered using what is so-called 2.5D technologies. But what is 2.5D? What makes it not true 3D? One of the last 2.5D first-person shooter games, Duke Nukem 3D, had some advanced features at that time, like sloped floors and ceilings, the ability to have room above room, and it allows the player to look up and down. And yet, it is still a 2.5D game. The thing is, even though it has these features, it achieved them by using some really clever tricks rather than real solutions. And that is why, when Quake came out, it was considered a true groundbreaking game because it achieved all of those using a general solution rather than relying on tricks. Sometimes there are hints you can find in the 2.5D game that tell you tricks are being used. One of the most obvious ones is the unnatural limit when you look up or down in games providing this feature, notably games based on the build engine like Duke Nukem 3D. You can look up and down in the original Duke Nukem 3D game using page up and page down keys, and when you release the key, the game resets the view to the center. It's almost like this was developed as an eye candy rather than some essential feature that the players would want to rely on to achieve certain goals. Indeed. Aiming in these games are only done horizontally. Vertical aiming is automatic, so there really is little reason for you to look up and down, except some rare scenarios where you want to have a better vision of the environment. For example, in stereo cases. But when you do look up and down, I'm sure you can tell something is off. But it might not be obvious to a lot of people what exactly feels so unnatural. To have a better understanding of what's going on. Let's compare the visual between Duke Nukem 3D and Quake when we look down in the game. If you still don't see the problem, let me highlight the difference for you. Notice how in Duke Nukem 3D, the edges of the box are always perfectly vertical, regardless of the vertical viewing angle. It's certainly not the case in Quake, and that is precisely why looking up and down feels so unnatural in Duke Nukem 3D. To further understand what causes the problem, we need to understand how perspective works. You're probably already familiar with this if you have learned drawing or photography. Basically, there are three commonly used perspectives in drawing: one point, two point, and three point perspectives. I say commonly used because there are other more complicated perspectives. For example, the five point perspective, which can produce a picture like was captured using a fisheye camera. One, two, and three-point perspectives can exist on the same picture because which perspective is used pretty much depends on how the object being drawn is placed in front of the camera. So when you have multiple objects in the same picture, all placed in different ways, you have all of the three perspectives in the same picture. So what does the word point mean in these perspective drawing methods? It means vanishing point. One key concept of perspective, as most people know, is that an object appears smaller when it gets further away from the picture plane, so eventually it will vanish when it's far enough. So one-point perspective means there is only one vanishing point, and everything extends to that one point until they are too small to be seen. One example would be looking straight into a road with buildings alongside. The end of the road is the vanishing point. When illustrated with a cube, the cube has one face parallel to the picture plane. When we move to an intersection and turn our heads 45 degrees horizontally, we now enter the territory of two-point perspective. Now the ends of the two rows form two vanishing points. Illustrated using a cube, we can see none of the faces is parallel to the picture plane, but the cube is only allowed to rotate around the vertical axis. It's because once we allow the cube to rotate however it wants, we must use three-point perspective, and that's when you are still in the center of the intersection. You look up and enjoy the view of a very tall building. Now, because the lower part of the building is closer to the picture plane than the upper part, if you extend the top of the building, it will vanish at some point. And because the two other vanishing points still exist, we now have three vanishing points. The three-point perspective drawing system is almost what all the so-called true 3D games based on, though it's actually not a perfect perspective. It's hard to say what human eyes really see, 
The book How to Draw by Scott Robertson and Thomas Birding suggests the naked eye sees a cover linear view, like a photo captured using a fisheye camera. It's probably hard to believe that things are bent as they get closer to the edge of our vision, but the density of photoreceptors on our retina gets lower and lower towards the edge, resulting into very blurred visions. The area of the retina that can provide clear vision is pretty small, and if you look at the small center area of a photo captured using a fisheye camera, it's close to the three-point perspective. Because most of us don't notice the curvilinear vision of our eyes, video games simply use the three-point perspective system, as it's much simpler than the five-point perspective system providing a curvilinear view. So why did I talk about perspective? Why is that related to our topic today? The short answer is that the 2.5D game engines are capable of rendering one and two-point perspective, but not three-point perspective. And if you remember how we introduced the three-point perspective system, we looked up. That's right, now the two keywords 2.5D and look up are finally connected. The incompatibility between 2.5D rendering and three-point perspective system caused the unnatural feeling when you look up or down in the game. Why isn't 2.5D capable of displaying three-point perspective? It boils down to how 2.5D renders the 3D world. From Wolfenstein 3D to Duke Nukem 3D, a lot of evolutions have been made to the 2.5D rendering technology, but its fundamental idea hasn't changed. Unlike the polygon-based 3D rasterization rendering technology, there are three basic elements in the 2.5D rendering engine. Walls, flats, or simply floors and ceilings, and sprites. The one that we'll mainly focus on for today's topic is walls. The basic question that the 2.5D rendering system asks when it renders walls is that what range of columns or pixels of the screen would a vertical wall occupy, and what are the heights of the two horizontal extremities of the wall on the screen? The answers to these two questions allow the engine to draw a perspectively correct wall on the screen one column of pixels at a time. The key to highlight here is that a wall in a 2.5D game consists of vertical lines. Duke Nukem 3D is much more advanced than Wolfenstein 3D, and yet it still draws walls with vertical lines. This means if a wall no longer appears vertical on the screen, the engine will struggle to draw it, and that's indeed the problem with three-point perspective. When you look up or down, the two vertical edges of a wall are no longer perfectly vertical on your vision, and the engine has no idea how to draw them, or at least no idea how to draw them cheaply. It's worth noting that Duke Nukem 3D is capable of drawing slopes. However, that comes with a huge cost. People notice how it is the only part of the engine where it has to resort to floating point calculation for the drawing. It's probably also the part of the engine that is the closest to a true 3D rendering. But because the computation is too taxing for the PCs at the time, its use is very limited in games based on the build engine. Doom simply disallows looking up and down. Duke Nukem 3D, on the other hand, allows looking up and down by simply shifting the rendering area. This can be confirmed by taking two screenshots and overlay one on another. This way of handling looking up or down is like you take a very large photo and look at only the center part of the photo during normal gameplay, and just move to the upper portion of the photo when you look up, or the lower portion of the photo when you look down. This is extremely cheap, but the end result is very strange to the eye, as the brain tries to explain the change of view with the look up or down, but it doesn't look like what it expects from the real world. So the look up and down feature of the build engine can indeed be considered an eye candy, and not even a good one. This is the same with another game I tested, which is Marathon, originally released for the Mac. Once again, you can see the two screenshots I took can be perfectly aligned. 2.5D rendering was an elegant solution to bring 3D World to hardware that was not capable of handling a true 3D rasterization rendering, but as we were approaching the mid-90s, it certainly started showing its age, as it struggled to achieve more visual effects to present the 3D world that is closer to what human eyes perceive, like the look up and down feature we explored today. And because the hardware became more and more powerful, 
true 3D rasterization rendering finally became possible on home computers and quickly took over the market. 3D rasterization rendering technology is radically different from the 2.5D rendering technology. It calculates where the three vertices of a triangle polygon should be on the screen and interpolates the content encompassed by the triangle. This means rendering no longer needs to be based on vertical pixel columns, which eliminates all the limitations imposed by the 2.5D system. Its flexibility allows it to dominate the video game industry until this very day. Nevertheless, the tales of 2.5D game engines shouldn't be forgotten, as they testify how the passion of talented people like John Carmack and Ken Silverman brought to the world what seems to be impossible on the limited hardware resources at the time. So there you have it, this is a brief video about how looking up and down works in a 2.5D game. I'll put the links to some reading materials in the video description if you want to learn more about 2.5D rendering technologies and its history. Subscribe to the channel for future contents. I will see you in the next video.